Hi there, I'm Wallace the Polish Toy Guy and today's video review is directly inspired by one of my recent conversations with a viewer. Hi there Bjorn if you're watching and in the comments he said that he likes the idea of me taking a look at older movie toys. So that's exactly what I want to do today. It's not the toy he requested, but I'm still assembling all of its pieces, so that's coming, don't you worry. Instead, I want to show you one of my favorite toys from the very first Michael Bay live-action movies, and that is all about Voyager class Ratchet. Also, yes, I'm practicing my American accent today to see if it still exists. I just think that reviewing Bayformers using this accent may be appropriate, or at least something that's worth considering. So let's see how that goes. Worst case scenario, I'll just go back to my British accent. But for now, let's take a look at Ratchet. So yes, this toy was released in 2007, and in vehicle mode it has around 18 centimeters of length, and uh, the funny thing about Bayformers, the first generation, shall we say, was that these toys were not designed to be movie accurate like the recent Studio series. No, this was designed to actually prove that Bayformers can transform just as well as they can on screen. Or at least they can try to transform into what they look like on the screen. So they are not exactly movie accurate, but I don't mind because I like a lot of these toys for what they are. And Ratchet in vehicle mode is really great. This is this bulky green brick on wheels. It feels very sturdy, it feels powerful, it just feels fun. So that's uh, optical aesthetics I can spot on this toy the very first moment I'm looking at it and I like it. If we look below we can see that the robot parts are maybe not all that well concealed but still you can't tell where's the chest, where are the legs, you can see the head okay but fine. Still I feel this is a decent first approach to the topic and the main details are here on the sides where we can see the fire department gold print and this lifeline, search and rescue, some nice inner suspension details, single color wheels sadly but they roll nicely, attached with a separate metal pin, some further details, we have this large rear bumper, also nicely painted with attachment points for some straps, hooks, that looks nice. We also have this roof piece, I'm no car expert so I'm not going to pretend I know what's the right word for this, I'm just going to go with roof harness which does include a spare tire, some nice details, metal like ones in appearance as well as some extra painted search lights. And we have extra painted search lights over here at the front of this uh, security measure, very nice front black but with nice paint and if you look carefully using the macro feature of my camera for example you can see that there are actually hammer letters molded in these slits of the front grille that's really cool detail and we also have painted turning lights that's nice and this looks really cool also and let's not forget about the doors which have salt plastic side view mirrors and this nice printed search and rescue fire department with Autobot logo in the middle. And the door handle that's always useful on the car. So not really caring if that's screen accurate, this is a nice representation of a car. Which also, if I have not mentioned that yet, is a Hammer H2 modified for rescue operations. In my country, this is usually... Uh, a paint scheme that's not associated with that kind of thing. It's usually yellow or orange or even white and red, but I guess it works. Actually, the color of this toy is the least important thing for me. The molding is what counts and it's absolutely fabulous on this Voyager Transformer. Any gimmicks in this mode? Um, not really. You can roll the toy on the floor which is nice for a car toy, but that's it. So let's go to comparisons before we transform Ratchet into his robot mode. 
So let's start comparing with some other first generation movie transformers. So on your left, you can see the very first leader class Optimus Prime, one of my beloved movie toys. And on my right, you can see the very first deluxe class Autobot Jazz, who was originally intended as the actual toy that I would use this American accent for. But then I switched my mind at the last moment to work with Ratchet. And for some younger movie toys, here we have the Last Night Premier Edition Deluxe Class Barricade and Studio Series Deluxe Class Jazz. And for something not related to this movie, here we also have Voyager Class Ultra Magnus from TF Classics as well as Masterpiece Sideswipe. And with that said, it's time to transform Ratchet into his robot mode. The first thing I want to do is to grip the roof harness and gently detach it. It attaches at three points, two over here and one in the middle of the back. So that's going to come in handy later. And also I think if I ever decide to record the how to transform video for this guy, I'm going to use my British accent just to see the difference. So now we want to get our hands under this panel in front of the rear wheel and push it out over here and over here. As you can see, there's a small cutout that goes onto this tab. And once that's released, we, on, we want to use this double hinge to actually swing this forward to cover up the front doors and side windows. And this will allow us in a second to deploy the legs. First, we want to flip down the rear bumper. Then we want to use this separation line to actually pull back on the legs just a bit for now because what I want to do right now is to actually come back to the front now that I have this space to work on this freely and first grab the front wheel pull on it one click like this and now use this hinge to swing this section out fully and now I'm going to go back to the legs which I will now separate. On my piece, this is still a very solid connection, which I'm happy about. Yes. And now, before we do anything further, we want to rotate this section around using this hinge in the middle of the knee. And as you can see, I'm having clearance issues, so this is a good time for me to deploy the lower leg. So what I want to do is to get my hands on this dark gray piece and deploy the foot, actually also using the hidden automorph gimmick to... Or, how did I say that? Automorph. Different accents are hard. Anyway, I want to get this over here, unclick it, yes, and this will allow this lower leg to deploy. We have now a knee guard and this goes out a bit and also this allows me to actually straighten out the lower knee and to put it in line with the thigh. So now the same thing on this side. You can also work on the lower leg once this is fully down. Anyway, before we stretch this into a line, we want to click out the foot, deploy the foot, and now turn it into a decently looking leg. We also want to drop down the thighs so that the loin piece is facing forward. And now it's time to adjust my camera. That should do it. I can see a girwalk forming, so that's good. Now I want to flip around the arms to the robot mode position, at least the arm guards. And now here we have this spine hinge. It just looks like that. And what we want to do over here is to get our hands on the roof and using this hinge that's below it, first flip it back like so. And using this lower hinge, now we get this to overlap with the front. But first we want to get our hands on the windshield and separate it into half that we will now turn around so they are ending on the back of the roof. 
to have something like this, but remember to keep a clearance so that the spine hinge can go through this section. And with that said, there's a small circle tab that will go into this position first. It may not click in, but you will see that it's secured. And now we also have one more hole like this and one more tab over here in the crotch area. And now we connect that and that actually jumps into place solidly. And now we can rotate the forearms down and push down on the bicep and the elbow. Same over here, like this. And finally, it's time to work with this, shall we say, lower engine cover and flip it around so that it ends on Ratchet's back. And now we only have to spin his head around if you twisted it over here while going to vehicle mode. And with that said, Ratchet's Voyager class robot mode is complete. And here we are, and I really like what I'm looking at. Of course, yes, I do admit that this looks pretty much nothing like movie Ratchet. It's way too bulky. And uh, you can tell this is Ratchet because A, we have the right head, the right color scheme, and he transforms into a Hammer H2. That's about it. Other details may have been lost in translation, but uh, I don't mind. I really like this toy for the very look of robot mode without actually caring for the movie context and how it's supposed to look. This is very fine. So, of course, yes, we have the head, which is uh, Ratch definitely slightly underpainted. It has only this uh, silver cheek-like vent details. Yes, he has some mouth details, some other things in there, but this green just makes it all hard to notice. But as you can see, we have quite nice light piping courtesy to this piece on the back of the head. But as I never really cared for Ratchet as a character or his design in the movies and just for the toy, I don't mind. Also, some nice details. We have this color-like thing around his head, some nice vents, things, lots of nice things going on here. And we also have some nice arm deals. Yes, you can see the screw hole, so that's a bit of a bugging situation, but uh, it can be helped, I guess. Some nice bicep details. Very nice details on the forearms, both front and back. And we have a four-fingered hand. Also quite nice details that just beg for panel lining. The chest is basically a car stuck in there, but it looks really cool in here, so I don't mind. Some nice details on the crotch, however that sounds. Very nice molding on the upper legs. I like how you can see the tire through this section. Some nice molded parts that actually look like painted plastic, but this is actually originally black, so that's nice. Uh, not much going on on the leg. We've seen this in vehicle mode, and so did with that, and so did with that. The new things are over here, they were hidden inside the vehicle mode, and that looks nice. Sometimes it can vanish through a too strong lightning configuration, but still, with some shadows in play, this looks really nice. So there's that. And also, I have to say, I think uh, for a movie toy, this is a fairly clean robot mode. Yes, you can see just a smidge of car cable over here, but nothing that's too annoying. This is a very nice toy. Just look at the profile. No garbage, no backpacks. For a first try, this is really a good first try, in my opinion. At least, if you're not really caring for this being screen accurate. <laughs> like it is the case with me. So yes, visually speaking, really cool toy. So let's see what else it can do. Let's start with the posability, which I do think is decent. It may not be stellar, but I don't mind. For what it is, I think it works. So we've already seen the head, which is on a simple swivel. And as you can see by non-existing GIF, there's no waist articulation. We have a full rotation, vertically speaking, in the shoulders. We also have a bit of side movement below the arm guards. 
And we also have a bicep swivel as well as an elbow. A bit of it anyway. And we have a bit of give in the hands. This is related to a gimmick I'm going to show in a moment. But yes, this is basically a Gundam looking arm as I call it, where the elbow hinge is actually hidden inward. Uh, not always liking this kind of looks because it kind of makes it hard to pose with all these nice details still visible, but here it works. And also for the legs, we don't really have too much of a split option because of the wheels getting in the way of other parts, so forget about that. But in terms of forward kick, we have something like this. Uh, it could be slightly better, but if you try to push it any further, you risk losing the connection in the spine hinge and the crotch. So, not recommended. We also have a knee slash thigh swivel, mostly for the transformation, but we do. And we also have a bit of knee bend, not 90 degrees, so that's sad, but... I guess it kind of works. And no real articulation for the feet. It's just for the transformation, no other axis available. So that's pretty much it. It's, like I said, nothing spectacular. I'd say it's decent, but it's not masterpiece level. It's not some other later movie toys level, but it works for me. And with the posability covered, it's time to go to gimmicks, and Ratchet has a few. Let's start with his right forearm, which has a small transformation gimmick. So what you want to do here is to get your hand on this green panel, preferably using nails if you have these available, and this will now allow you to flip down this part of the outer forearm and uh, swing in the hand and replace it with this fold-out small battle axe, I think. It kind of looks like a butterfly replacing a hand, but a battle axe. Which I suppose can be sometimes useful for rescue operations if you're trying to remove the breeze from your path, or maybe, just maybe, if you think your patient is beyond any hope you may want to give him a last act of mercy, though I wouldn't really like to have a rescuer like that tending to me. Still, I suppose that gives him some kind of gimmick. So that's a plus, but the main gimmick of this toy is actually related to this roof harness we removed earlier. The first thing you can do with this is to split it and if you just want to have it for show, you can use this tab we used to connect it to the vehicle mode, use this hole over here, dock one with another, and now you can have it as sort of a cape or just back decoration for Ratchet. Not very visible from the front if you can't manage to keep it split, but it's still a way to store this when not in use, but if it's in use, you can actually do something like this using this connection point on the second forearm. And this is actually, shall we say, tap coded. And by tap coded, I mean there is a small cutout in this attachment point, which corresponds to a molded detail in the front of this peg. So you just connect one to another and this kind of secures this in the only right place. And now we have Ratchet having some kind of attack pincers. Hard to tell what this is supposed to be, but it has a moving gimmick. If you push forward on this green element, you can make it go up and down like it's closing on an enemy. Or some very unlucky patient beyond recovery. So, I admit uh, that's in no way super awesome, but it gives Ratchet some kind of weapon, and I do like to sometimes display him like that. So, yes, he has gimmicks, not many or not all that impressive, but if someone asks if he has gimmicks, you can say, yes, he does. And with that said, it's time for robot mode comparisons, so let's start with other movie Ratchets plus G1. So, here's the G1 masterpiece version, and here we have 
movie ratchet as a cyber slammer from the first movie and as a deluxe class from the third movie and you can see how this improves this significantly not that i mind because i like this for what it is but still some people do think this is a far far superior toy and for some other movie toys here we have Studio Series Voyager Class Starscream and Deluxe Class Stinger, as well as Dark of the Moon Deluxe Class Bumblebee and Hunt for the Decepticons Deluxe Class Ironhide. And for some non-movie Transformers, here we have Deluxe Class Autobot Slug from Power of the Primes, Generations Deluxe Class Warpath, Voyager Class Power of the Primes Grimlock, and Voyager Class Skyquake from Transformers Prime. And finally, we have the common cola can, as well as one American dollar. So to sum it all up, I really like Voyager Class Ratchet from the first Transformers movie. Being the first attempt at translating this character into toy form, he is far from perfect, and he's far from screen accurate, but if you don't really mind having a little screen accuracy and just want to have a solid, bulky, fun-looking toy robot, I think Ratchet may be up your alley. I know I'm very happy with him and still, after all these years, he is probably my favorite movie Ratchet toy. So if you ever consider getting him and have the opportunity to do so, go for it. I think you will not be disappointed. And that's all for this video review. I will be back with the next one soon, and until then, stay well. Whew, and okay, that's enough with the American accent for one night. Tell me in the comment section, please, if you prefer to hear me using British accent or American accent for the movie reviews. I'm curious what are you going to say, if that's something that should stick or not. One way or another, that was an interesting, if not slightly taxing experiment, and we shall see how that will develop in the future. Have a good day and thanks for watching.